Hello everyone, Brian here. This is the June update of what's growing on in my backyard garden. If you didn't catch May's update, be sure to check that out. In this pile of rubbish are a couple of galango plants. And what this actually is, is a bed that I created earlier in the year with the front portion of it being a compost pile. And the back portion is where the galango will grow. And the galango, from what I read, they like to be topped off with um, cuttings and such. So that's what's there. And next to it was a black bean. And this is the front portion of the compost pile and I've thrown some soil on top of it just to make it presentable for the video. This is a sharp blue blueberry and blueberry season's coming to a close. So looking forward to taking the netting off of it and letting it grow. This is a pot of shallots that were grown from seed and they're very easy to do. Just sprinkle the seeds and tap them in a little bit. In a couple months there will be a bunch of shallots. Here unfortunately was supposed to be asparagus sprouts but the seeds never sprouted so going back to the drawing board on that one. In this bucket here or a uh, this five gallon container are some elephant ear plants that I received as pups from my mom. And these are edible. They're enjoyed in southeastern cuisine, especially in Vietnamese cuisine. This is my dwarf curl kale. It's been growing for a few years now. I'm just now seeing how tall it'll get. In here, I planted some cumin, um, excuse me, turmeric tubers, and along with ginger and galango and cardamom, the tropical plants, I'm trying to see if I can grow them with success. This is a black beard iris, and the flowers are really deep purple and um, black appearing. Well, that's the hope. I got these. A few years ago and they've just been growing here. I've moved one to the front yard and hoping that uh, they'll flower. That's a blackberry and blackberry seeds coming to an end. Right here if you remember from the May update were some sugar baby watermelons and they haven't really grown much so I pulled them out and planted these Siam Queen Thai basil in their place. And I had a Klondike watermelon that needed a place to be placed, so it's there. In the back here are some Italian Roma bush tomatoes. This is a Chinese mustard, a Gai Choi, and it has bolted. And I like to plant things just to see what will happen. So Gai Choi, they like cooler weather, otherwise they'll bolt. This is a muncher cucumber, and it's growing pretty well. It's growing next to the papaya on the trellis. The weather's been a little bit cooler, so um, cucumber production has been slow. This is one of the Hawaiian papayas. I believe it's a Hawaiian papaya, and it's the fruit's beginning to set. And below is a national pickling cucumber. It's also slow to produce because of the cooler weather and also because I started the seed much earlier before the weather warmed up. Here is a sugar pie pumpkin and right next to it are some daikon radishes they're beginning to flower and produce seed pods. All the dirt that you see in front of the brick and against the lawn is new planting space for the year. And so to condition the soil, um, I just basically planted anything on here, including this 
uh, sugar pie pumpkin is starting to show some of its um, orange color and that's the biggest one I have right now and another thing I've been planting are beans and peas they're nitrogen fixers and these I'll be sa seed saving to grow later in the year and next to the peas are is this giant sunflower and today we have June gloom it's actually sprinkling a little bit as I'm out here so I was looking forward to the warm weather for these plants but it's cooled off today but I do appreciate the water that we're getting this is a sugar baby watermelon I believe I've got a lot of male flowers another pea plant those are mammoth melting sugar snap peas if I remember the name back here are some Ozark Beauty strawberries these are ever bearing and um, a couple things happening here I set the fruit on a rock so that they're away from the pill bugs and slugs and now I have this cage here to protect them from birds and uh, four-legged four -legged furry animals like possums and skunk so and in front here are um, some companion plants onions are great companion plants for strawberries and they're those are directly sown Tokyo white scallion and these back here were sown in a starter pot and transplanted over here and right here is a national pickling cucumber it's pretty much dormant because I started to see when the weather was cooler and it's been cool I'm going to leave it and see if it will come back to life or come to life when the weather warms up these are cinnamon basil they have a very interesting scent and I will come back to talking about why I'm growing them later when we look at another plant these are air couvert filet beans and the variety is Nico. These are heirloom beans. Very, very sweet. Very, very sweet. I really enjoy them. I've already got a couple of handfuls. These are corn, um, hybrid white corn. And this is a yellow mountain sweet um, watermelon. And it has a yellow flesh. It's a watermelon with yellow flesh. The corn I'm planting on this part here are golden bantam corn and I'm planting them with the three sisters method. These are um, okay size corn and I'm feeling them and I don't think I have a good pollination rate because they don't feel like they're filled in. Below is this hybrid kombucha squash and it's just done by um, no rhyme or reason it just happened on its own I planted some seeds that were um, formed from last season and it looks like it's a hybrid between a kombucha squash and a sugar pie pumpkin it's got the kombucha squash leaf here's a kombucha squash leaf it's basically a spade shaped leaf and this is a pumpkin leaf it's got sl slits so that um, hybrid plants pretty cool it's got a very nice variegated pattern on the squash and it's also bushy like a pumpkin this is a yard long bean it's part of the three sisters the beans add nitrogen to the soil the squash protects the bottom of the corn and the corn provide the bean with something to climb on this is a kombucha, kombucha squash and I grew it pretty much all winter long and one of the things I like to do is just grow plants and see what happens with them um, there are best practices with plants when to grow them and such but I just throw seeds out there and see what happens. So 
it's enjoyable to me. This is the backside of the trellis, and this trellis was pretty much built for the um, avocado that's back here. This is a purple potato, and I'm growing this in the ground. I'm also going to hill it. This is a um, Air Colbert filet bean, and the variety is Trompe de Farcy. It has a pretty neat purple variegated skin. In the back is a wantum butternut squash. It's got yellow leaves, so it's not too happy. Um, so this is one of the avocado, reed avocado trees. And it's a young tree, so I discovered that they need shade. So this whole corn row and this trellis was placed here for the avocado. Here are some pots with some okra that I'm trying to germinate. I've been trying all year. Um, I guess the weather hasn't been warm enough for them to germinate. That was an apple and some beans and apple. That was a pink lemonade lemon. More beans with a yuzu tree. I'll do a fruit tree update, so I won't be concentrating too much on fruit trees in this video. This is a potato. And I've mentioned many times before, if you've followed along in my videos, that I'm trying to grow potatoes with um, emphasis on putting effort into them. And one of those things is to uh, hill or mound the potato plants as they grow. I had three plants that I started here, but only one has taken off. And that's that was a um, baking potato, those really long, you know, almost foot-long ba baking potatoes. And here are some beans and peas. This is a sugar baby, watermelon. And it's bigger because I started this later in the spring where the when the weather's warmer. So it's going to be bigger and probably more healthy. It's one of my newer plants. This is a tiger fig. It's got a couple fruits on there. Um, and down below is a Robertson navel orange and kind of sad that this one dropped but there are blossoms on here and hopefully it will be able to support more fruits and hey look it's a ladybug larvae I've got some um, I forget the name of the pests but um, leaf miners or leaf some worm that's underneath the leaves causing leaf curl. Here is a carnation. I grew that from seed and grew that. This is a second year old plant. It hasn't flowered yet. These are some milkweed plants that I started in December. So I think they're kind of stunted, but I'm going to leave them. Vervain, really cool plant. It looks like it's glowing. It's got little tiny flowers. It looks like it's glowing. So pretty cool. And here is a bed of red potatoes and in the last video you saw they were just little tiny plants and when potatoes take off they really take off and I've been mounting and hilling them so be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to see a video on the harvest so I'm, I'm already curious to know how many potatoes and what size they are uh, in the past I just basically put a put a potato in the ground and let it grow and I got you know one or two potatoes so I'm now hoping that by hilling them, I'll get maybe a good size harvest. Bull blood beet coming along. And back here are some uh, black beans and the ginger plant. Um, so this is a new spot for the ginger. I'm trying to find different type of microclimates around my yard and pla placing ginger tubers to see how they're doing. This is a um, dragon fruit, a pink flesh dragon fruit, and my tortoise got to it and ate everything down to the stem. Uh, and he um, enjoyed it, but uh, the um, dragon fruit cactus finally grew back. Here is a um, shishito pepper. Back here is 
is um, another sugar pie heirloom pumpkin and it's doing another pumpkin because the other pumpkin that it made was eaten by my tortoise. Up here again on the Hugo Mound are zucchinis. Um, production has halted because of the cooler weather. These are mojito mint, the authentic mint in the mojito cocktail. So they're dormant right now. Next to that are some artichoke plants and then below is this jack-o'-lantern pumpkin and the seeds were thrown in winter I wanted to see what happened. These are some more pie pumpkins and there are two here. I don't think they're going to grow any bigger. I think they're just stunted. In the back I have another dark star zucchini and this is all part of succession planting. Um, want to get another uh, harvest of zucchini. So I don't plant a lot of plants because I it looks nice to have big harvests but the food ends up going to waste. Um, let's see, oh yeah, uh, green globe artichokes. I'm letting those flower. Those are going to be ginormous flowers. This is a red barren peach. And next to the red barren peach are some black beauty zucchini bushes. This is one of them. And once again, its uh, production has halted because of the cooler weather. Um, but there are lots of female plants or um, buds. So once it warms up, we'll get more zucchinis. These are some um, scallions. And I'm mounting those. Those are, I can't remember the particular name of them right now, but I'm mounting them. So check those out. This is a poblano pepper. Here's another one. So here is pretty bad. These these guys are just hanging on. But you saw the all the buds that are forming. Um, let's see. Artichokes. I'm starting more artichokes. These are Imperial Star artichokes that I'm starting. Back there are okras. More okras that I'm starting. Hopefully they'll germinate. And this is a winter melon that I've transplanted right underneath the Moral Blood Orange. And moving up the Hugo bed, there's a Black Beauty zucchini that's ready to harvest. Um, Coming back down this way, this is a tea tree or tea bush, the, the type of that um, black tea and green tea is made from, Camilla sinensis, and it's starting to do flower buds. Um, any tea experts out there, let me know if I should nip off the buds. I mean, I enjoy the flowers, but I want to also get a this this tree to this bush to produce for me. And these are some seed pods. Um, I'm going to want to try to germinate them. Last time I tried to grow this plant from seed, but I think the seeds that I received in the mail were really, really old, and they never germinated. So I'm going to want to try since I have fresh seeds. All along the grass here are garlic chive, and they've not really exploded because I haven't been watering the lawn. Um, Jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, and the seeds were planted from a jack-o'-lantern that was um, used last October. So I planted two plants, hoping to have my own jack-o'-lantern pumpkin patch here. This is a winter melon, and um, I tried growing winter melon last year and I didn't get much success, so I'm hoping for some winter melon this year. More uh, mammoth melting sugar peas and those pill bugs, man, they eat everything. Um, this is verbena, lemon verbena. It's got really nice white flowers and they're used in tea and they, they smell almost like lemongrass so I think they're a good substitute for each other. That's the other jack-o'-lantern pumpkin and these are the um, smaller um, scallions that I'm trying to mound. And here is a mystery squash. 
I think it's a sugar pumpkin, but the leaves don't suggest so because there are not slots on them. And more, more beans, black beans, lots more beans. I plant them everywhere, I tell you. Um, here is another ginger. And uh, there's a watermelon rind because, you know, I read that they like to have um, organic matter composting on top. So um, this is a different microclimate. I'm planting the ginger there to see if it will grow better. I'm planting ginger and seeing where they're happiest and I'll con concentrate there. Um, down there is Moroccan mint. And you just saw the um, bear's lime. I only have one lime this year, but more flowers are, are coming in. And this, I forget what kind of pumpkin I planted, but uh, um, I have all these seeds from a seed library that I received as a gift. So I just plant everything. This is a Timothy hay. Uh, I've got this cage around it that I was using for my blueberry plant. And I'm trying to protect the seeds from the finches that are around here. I'm trying to save the seeds so that I can grow more, more of this Timothy hay because I feed that to my rabbit. And back here are a bunch of gladiolus or swart lily. And um, yeah, when you plant them, you're going to get a lot of bulbs. And I've run out of space to put them. So here they are. Next year, I'll probably move them to the back of this planter. This is a flax lily, a Becca flax lily. And it um, got this on clearance in the clearance aisle. It's got these little berries. And according to the internet, they're edible. They also produce these little flowers. And they taste like persimmon. So it's very weird. They got a little bit of sweetness, but it tastes like persimmon. Over here are two watermelon plants, and this is a moon and star watermelon, and that's an, another sugar pie pumpkin. Um, these are easy to distinguish because the moon and stars have speckles on their um, leaves. And this, I believe, is a Klondike watermelon. I, I tried growing watermelon in this spot or sprouting the seeds and um, they never sprouted so then I tried a different watermelon and then now they all decide they want to come out so that's why I have a, two different watermelon varieties in one area this is another Klondike that I started started the seeds a little bit later and I transplanted it here more Timothy grass um, they're just I'm just trying to grow as many as I can and this is a Ericover bush bean or fillet beans and the ver um, variety is Nicole um, Nickel or Nicole um, very surprising in how much it produces I already harvested a handful and there's still a lot of beans on there that's another thing of Timothy hay uh, coming this way daylily this is a marquee moon it's a whitish cream color uh, flower. Got my moringa tree. Grew that from seed. That's my cranberry hibiscus. Grew that from seed. The parent uh, plant died so it left a, bu a bunch of seeds and I'm growing them. Um, starting to get a little bit messy over here but this bucket used to have raspberry uh, canes in there and I thought they grew like weeds so I threw some soil on top of the canes and they never came back kind of sad but um, on here is this Brussels sprouts and it's ended up being a trap crop there's a spider in there that um, likes to eat the cabbage worms uh, and these are um, dragon dragon's tongue arugula I'm, I'm saving the seeds uh, for this is a national pickling cucumber and this is this was sowed a little bit later in the season when it's warmer so that's why you see how healthy the um, leaves are and look a cucumber here is hiding in the grass 
So pretty cool. Um, yeah, back to the Brussels sprouts. I've been trying to grow Brussels sprouts and again, not following best practices and just planting it whenever. So maybe this year I'll, I'll do what's uh, proper and uh, plant it in the fall as a winter crop and we'll see. Maybe I have to fertilize it. I hate fertilizing things, but maybe I'll fertilize it and see if I can get Brussels sprouts. Um, more black beans that I grow everywhere. This is a amaryllis. And here is this uh, lalock plant again. Its uh, scientific name is Piper lalock. Not to confuse, be confused by the narcotic one. And this plant is pretty interesting. It's got a very interesting fragrance. It's kind of cinnamony. Cin cinnamon and if you can't grow that plant, grow cinnamon basil. That was what I was talking about earlier when you saw the cinnamon basil. It's a good substitute for that. And then you saw the um, pomegranate and that was blood orange and these are daylilies. This is one I grew from seed. It takes a couple years for it to flower and that's about to flower again. Um, in here with this other reed avocado, I'll just show you real quick. I'm finally getting fruit. So check that out. Read avocado. But uh, down here are more beans. Just uh, nitrogen fixing. And I'll get beans. So I like to grow um, beans, as I've said many times. But you don't want to grow garlic chive with um, near the base of any trees, especially avocados, because they have shallow roots. That's another mammoth melting um, sugar snap pea. So yeah, um, I learned that uh, growing chives, garlic chives, near the base of an avocado tree is not very, very smart. Those are uh, cilantro, and this is a Persian buttercup or ranunculus. It's it's growing out of season. And here is my raised plant raised bed. I'm doing separate, a separate video because these videos get pretty long, but this is just a quick walkthrough. So be sure to check out uh, videos on the raised planter here. Here's another raised planter. This is for the Gardens Across America project, so be sure to check the videos on those. I've got uh, watermelon and, uh, let's see, pole beans and this um, Kerlankic melon. And that's pretty much it for the backyard. Wait, I forgot about a couple of containers. Um, these uh, containers that used to sit where the planters were, and now they're in the middle of the lawn. Um, and I'm filling up this um, white corn, and it feels like it's pretty filled out. So I'm pretty optimistic about having a, a well germinated, I mean a well pollinated, filled out white corn harvest. So be sure to come back and check that out. This is a Japanese long cucumber. So I'm growing this one for the first time. And these are Utah tall celery seedlings. And in this other one is um, a bucket full of purple potatoes. They have white flowers. And um, this is a potato bucket with some watermelon growing. Um, this sugar baby, along with, I think, a yellow um, fleshed one. I think the mountain yellow sweet. And this one hasn't produced any female flowers yet. But this sugar baby <coughs> has produced um, some female flowers, and there are a couple here. Won't um, won't know for sure that they've set or been pollinated until they grow a little bit bigger. So hopefully one of them will turn into a watermelon. And more more beans. Let's say. Um, Air Colbert, the Trump de Farsi variety. And these are beefsteak tomatoes. 
the flowers starting to set and some bok choy but yeah the uh, potatoes here grow um, by themselves because I had some potatoes in there and um, so I don't get to mound them but they grow pretty well in the container because the container is warmer than in the ground so anyways I've uh, showed what's growing in the backyard thanks for watching and be sure to check back for updates especially if you're as curious as I am and want to see how the red potatoes are doing